Whoa! Howie Roseman with another major signing back-to-back -back days. You don't think they want to solve the run defense problem? Yeah, man, they're going for it. The Philadelphia Eagles are all in. Let's talk. And Dominican Sue is a Philadelphia Eagle. What's up, Scribble Football fans? My name is Stephen Heider. This is Gate City Sports Channel. If you're new to the channel, it's the first, second, third time you caught my content, and you enjoyed today's discussion. We're on a journey. We're on a path. We just crossed over 6,700 subscribers. We're heading towards 7,500 subscribers. I would love for you to be a part of that equation. Just need you to hit that subscribe button to do that. To my OG subscribers, hat in hand here to ask you a favor, guys. Hit that thumbs up button. Smash the like button. Help me spike this algorithm and get this in front of new people that we could potentially convert to our little audience here on the YouTube. Man, I didn't see this one coming, guys. I, I really didn't. I was not opposed to the move, but I just felt like if you're going to make this type of decision, this is the type of decision you make before you pay Fletcher Cox $14 million. All due respect to Fletcher, man. All time Eagles, great. I'm not trying to come at him that way. I'm not trying to take money off anyone's table. You know, obviously, I want Fletcher to do the best for him and his family and his future. With that said, there's a money aspect to playing football, guys, and there's a salary cap and the percentage you allocate towards it. I just felt like this is the type of move you make in the offseason. However, happy to have him when it happens. And Dominican Sue is a good football player. As I stated even in my video, guys, I said that he is the best all-around defensive tackle that was on the market. I felt like there were better run stoppers you could get. There are guys that could probably be a better fit at the nose tackle position, right? I talked about Linval Joseph, and we ended up signing him. I talked about Brandon Williams, former you know, Baltimore Raven, big physical nose tackle. We talked about Malcolm Butler, former Patriot. You know, we talked about a lot of guys. I gotta be honest, man. This is a, uh, a definitely a way of saying we are serious about shutting down our weakness and making teams have to respect what we are at the line of scrimmage. This is a heck of a rotation, guys. So just to define what happened, if you guys are like, okay, why isn't Ndamukong Sue, like, what's the role he's gonna play, Steve? Like, what is this? To begin with, no clue how they work this rotation. We'll see. But, generally speaking, from what I saw on the Tampa Bay film, because I haven't watched Indomitian Sioux all the way back to, like, I watched them, but I haven't watched the film all the way back to Detroit and Miami and all that, guys. But from what I saw from his Tampa Bay film is he was primarily an interior defensive tackle that played on the strong side. So, in essence, Fletcher Cox's role. He's a three-tech on the strong side. He's the over. He's the over defensive tackle. In opposition, the under-defensive tackle, like in our system, is Javon Hargrave. Because we run a 50 front, you need a heavy rotation at defensive tackle, and this is quite heavy because when Jordan Davis does return from injured reserve, man, that's six deep. You're six deep at this spot. you got a backup for every single position. I mean, they're, they're making sure that this doesn't become the Achilles heel that prevents us from winning a Super Bowl. I mean, look, on the over, you got Fletcher Cox and Endowment can sue. On the over side of things. At the nose, you got Linval Joseph, former two-time pro baller in his own right, and just an absolute beast of a man. And you got the young guy. You got the physical, you know, move people guy. We all remember the clips from the freaking, you know, offseason and what he was doing to folks. You got Jordan Davis behind it at the nose. Linval Joseph and Jordan Davis at the nose. And then on the underside... You still got Javon Hargrave, who I think is tied with all interior defensive linemen in sacks. And you got Milton Williams, who's been a pretty good addition, you know, draft pick for the Eagles. Like a quiet, quietly really solid rotational piece, right? He's not, I wouldn't project him quite yet to be a starting caliber yet. Solid rotational piece, though. Solid rotational player that can burn you if you're not careful. Man, this team is loaded, guys. On the interior, there's a lot of depth right now. They're going for it, man. They're swinging for the fences here. And I know a lot of you guys are going to chime in with this comment like, dude, Gannon has to get this done, man. I mean, how much more can you give a single coach? At the end of the day, I don't care, man. They're trying to make the system work. The system has certain parameters for it to work. And they're getting the bodies in here to do it. Now, I don't know how much Fletcher Cox played a role in this. I was, um, I was very vocal, guys, about the contract. And mind you, I'm a huge Fletcher Cox guy. I got his jersey in my closet back there. You know what I'm saying? Like, Fletch is my guy, man. He's one of the all-time greats here. With that said, guys, I'm never trying to take food off the table from somebody. I'm never trying to prevent a man from growing his wealth. I'm never trying to prevent another man from, you know, securing his future. I'm happy for Fletch in that regards. But football 
is a sport that has a salary cap and while the numbers are, are malleable, they can be moved, contracts can be bent and molded to your will, there's still, you know, you got to look at the percentages you're paying at positions and how players make up a certain percentage of your cap. I was skeptical of that contract. I was very skeptical of it. But I did say at the end of it, I said, he makes us better. He makes us a better team. This is, whoo, man. Surprising to still add in Dominic Sue on top of it. Sue and Fletch on one side in a rotation. is That's crazy. Hargrave and Milton Williams on the other side in a rotation. That's crazy. The nose, Linville Joseph and Jordan Davis, when that finally gets back and it's 100% healthy. That's going to be crazy. This is going to be a very deep and talented defensive line. It is going to be real interesting to see how things play out down the stretch, man. They saw the list. They heard, they heard a lot of the rumblings, guys. Apparently, the... Forward scouting, there's forward scouting within the departments, guys. Forward scouting took a look at things and said, hey, man, we got some lines coming up here, offensive lines, and we got some running games where we got to make sure that that's not our Achilles heel or else we're going to suffer some losses that probably shouldn't be lost, you know, games that shouldn't be lost, to you know, put it real simple. <sighs> hey, if you jumped off the bandwagon, you better hatch back on real quick, bro. <laughs> you better jump on fast, man, because how he's not playing. How he is not playing, bro. He wants that second Super Bowl. This is not a joke for him, man. I'm happy, man. I, I couldn't I couldn't be any happier with the results of this week. Following a loss, your first loss on the season, they didn't just rest on their laurels of being 8-0 before the loss. They didn't just say, we'll get guys back eventually. They took an honest assessment of the team, probably from their coaches, probably from the scouting department, probably listened to what players like Fletcher Cox was saying, which is, hey, man, 70 snaps kind of wore me out. <laughs> it, it seems like they took everything in the totality, did not rest on their laurels, and said, we got to get better. This cannot be the reason why we get derailed for a Super Bowl run. Let's go. Fly Eagles fly, y'all. All right, y'all. I'll see y'all in the next video.